Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Collaboration Space. I'm your host, Nancy Lucier, and joining me today is Giancarlo Brato from Smart Technologies. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Nancy. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, we're going to be talking about something interesting, something we haven't talked about yet on our podcast, which is optimizing corporate training in the new workplace. Um, we know that organizations today have to work really hard to attract and retain talent, you know, because the marketplace is so competitive um, when searching for that top talent. So we need to make sure we provide growth opportunities to everyone. So can you share with us, you know, what are some of the challenges or pain points that you're seeing or that we experience with legacy corporate training tools and techniques? Yeah, and I think, you know, if you ask that question to anybody who's listening right now, they will give you a list and probably on the top of that list has all to do with uh, engagement, right? You know, before the pandemic, you know, we go into these rooms, spend a whole day, maybe it was three to four days, you know, eight hours sitting and listening passively. And now that the, you know, pandemic happened, we realized, oh, wow, we have to go like online. So they took all that content and threw it online and thought that we'd just sit through, you know, these eight hours of like pure content sitting passively and that's just not working. Right. So yeah, it was self-service. You have to trust, you have to trust me that I'm going to go in there and do that. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very, it's a very different uh, looking world. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when we want to upgrade our training programs, you know, for the new workplace where some of us are in the office, some of us are not, we move back and forth, you know, what should we focus on when we're looking to make those upgrades? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a great question, especially now when we look at our the nature of our work, which a lot of businesses, you know, are hybrid, right? And so some of our employees are in some days and not in others. We have to think about flexibility and, and really the personalization of attending to our, to our uh, you know, um, our employees who are the learners. And what's interesting, if we go by the fundamental principles of like, what are the processes, like three core processes we need for learning to happen? They're actually quite simple, right? It's perception, it's attention and memory. And perception relates to, we have to realize that every individual has different experiences and they bring different things with them. Uh, so we have to get to know who they are. So your process of developing your training program should incorporate that. The second one is attention, right? And we, we have very low attention and we can't remember lots of inf information at a time. And so we have to make it dynamic. And so I'll, I'll show an example here, a scenario, you know, showing your content, that program that you use every single day and watching someone manipulate it or annotate over top of it. Like we can no longer have static, you know, visuals and presentations. We have to do dynamic things with those visuals and be able to pull things up on the fly. But probably most importantly, is how do we get to the third part, which is memory, you know, helping people remember things so that it sticks in long-term memory so they can apply it a month from now, a year from now. And that means we have to make people active. And so what we have to consider is that no longer is this basic, you know, over Zoom image sharing and put your comment in the chat, that's way too passive, right? We have to tune to if I'm, you know, having a discussion around some application that you're familiar with and I'm helping you relook at how to work with it, I have to realize you might be at the park, <laughs> right? On your cell phone, digesting that content. And can you contribute to it? Or maybe you're on your iPad, right? In your home office, or maybe you're at the desk. We have to be flexible and cater to these different modalities, but we have to create opportunities where people can actually contribute in real time. And so we have to think differently about how we future-proof the tools and also the type of experience that we have. So that's memorable, it's dynamic, it's interactive. Uh, we have a white paper that's coming out. So if you want to unpack that more, we'll send people a link to, uh, to a white paper that Smart's putting together because it really is a different way of thinking about uh, learning and development. Uh, and we have to kind of upgrade all of our ways of kind of operating, but also the tools that we use to actually make that a reality. Yeah, um, thank you for that uh, white paper. I'll make sure we put that link in our show notes so everyone can get it. Um, a couple of things stood out to me. I like that you said that it's kind of personalized content to me and you're going to show me, you know, things that I'm going to be using every day. And you you illustrated all the different devices, you know. So you're making it really simple for the user, no matter how or where they want to connect, they're going to be able to engage and keep this interesting. So all, all good stuff. So I know that when I go to a training or a seminar, you know, I learn a lot of new things and I have the best of intentions that when I get back to my office, I'm going to use all those new things. But sometimes it just goes back to business as usual. You know, I've got that to-do list. I've got, you know, multiple applications telling me all these tasks that are due. How can we connect corporate training to employees' everyday work so it doesn't get lost and it keeps it relevant in fostering, you know, everyday productivity? 
Yeah, it's it's such a it's such a great challenge, right? And I think one of the things to think about is, you know, what is what is the behavior that we expect to see post the development and the training? And then does our training and development program model that both in the tools that we use, but also in the practices that we do, right? And I'll, I'll share a concrete example. There was uh, Salesforce put out the 2022 uh, digital skills report and 18 diff uh, different countries, you know, thousands of sales leaders kind of ranked. Here are the kind of skills that we need that we're trying to focus on. And collaborative, the use of collaborative tools was one of them. So the spirit is, you know, let's say you're, you're in your workforce, you want to create a more dynamic, cross-functional, collaborative uh, workforce. Well, how does your training model that, right? Do you have different people from the different sectors within that training so that they get to know each other? And then what is the tools and the practices and are you modeling that during the training session so that your training is just like a spitting image of what you, the behaviors you expect to see outside. And so the more that you're able to connect the two, and we talked earlier about you, know, you seeing them, seeing themselves in the tools that they operate with during their training, right? But also, it's the type of behavior that you're modeling during the training that you're also saying, hey, look, you know, you can use these tools and you can behave in this way when the training's done with your peers to do your, you know, your tasks. I think that's the way that we should be thinking about uh, making a direct, a closer link towards what we're doing in our growth and development programs and what we're expecting to see in our workers uh, in their productivity. Wonderful. Well, Giancarlo, thank you so much for sharing all those insights. I think it gave people some concrete ideas to move forward with their with their corporate training programs, especially in this hybrid workplace that we're in. So thank you again for spending this time with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. You're welcome. And thank you to all of our listeners who joined us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe to the audio podcast feed on your favorite listening app. Just search for the collaboration space. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. For more information, visit abispl.com slash smart.